Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. Before I give you any kind of an intro into my next interview, and by the way, it's with Barry Stevens. He's a Canadian filmmaker, Toronto-based, I believe, who, who's he's Emmy Award-winning. He's been uh, working as a, a journalist, a documentarian for many, many years, and, and, and working on some pretty serious issues and serious topics. And we're going to talk about his film today, Undercover Jihadi. But I want to I want to do a quick shout out to Darcy Duick. He is my first, believe it or not, my first Patreon subscriber. I mean, come on, can I? Can we wait for the applause to die down? just a little bit. Darcy, thanks for uh, getting behind what I'm doing and uh, coming alongside and supporting me. Darcy got a copy of my book, Real Change is Incremental. He got a copy of Digital Graffiti, an old, uh, not that old, uh, DVD uh, uh, of, of some sleight of hand magic that I that I did many years ago. And of course, the fortune telling, uh, the notorious uh, uh, fortune telling fish. So please check, check out my site, patreon.com backslash DPL. You can just go there and search for David Peck and find out more about how you can support uh, Face to Face and what I'm doing here. We talk today about Barry's new film, Undercover Jihadi, and, and we talk about terrorism and ideology and, and, and martyrdom. We talk about how, how so many of us are just following a script and 9-11 comes into the conversation and gang violence and marginalized communities and about the history of family violence and, of course, about the Toronto 18. This is about uh, violence, it's about relationships, it's about terrorism, it's about the prevention of all uh, uh, of those things as well as about reconciliation and about redemption of a very particular sort. And Barry and I, I think, had a great time. I hope Barry feels the same way. And I'm looking forward to part two. So please do uh, check it out. And don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my uh, speaking and my writing. And also rabble.ca for more podcasts, more uh, articles, uh, blogs about issues that matter. Coming right up, Barry Stevens. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by a very special guest here with us today is Barry Stevens um, to talk about his new film uh, airing on uh, TBO, has already aired on TBO in the last couple of days, Undercover Jihadi. Barry, thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. So uh, you, you, you've picked a pretty sensitive topic uh, to, to, to uh, unpack, to, yeah. to dig into. Can you tell us a little bit about... You know, the title is sort of, I guess, self-explanatory in a way, but can you tell us a little bit more about the film? Well, yeah, the, the title does, does refer to the central character, central person in the film, the documentary. Uh, so I guess I should call him a subject. Uh, but he's, he's, um, his name is Mubin Sheikh, and he is uh, a guy who, who, who knows a lot about jihadism or extremism, Islamic extremism, or what he might call... Muslim supremacism. He he, he has various hmm. words for it. Um, he used to be a violent extremist, or, or well, I shouldn't say he was violent. I should say he 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 had the uh, ideology of a violent mm, extremist right. uh, when he was a young man, and then he de-radicalized uh, and uh, he became an undercover operative for CSIS and subsequently the RCMP, and was a principal witness in the trial of what was known then as the Toronto 18, about 10 years ago. Uh, these were a bunch of guys who uh, planned to um, take over CBC, uh, attack CSIS with bombs, uh, attack various downtown targets in Toronto, and uh, had go into Ottawa and behead the prime minister. Right. So that was their goal, and they were thwarted. Uh, and they are. Some of them have served. Some of them were exonerated. Uh, were, were were found not guilty. Uh, some were found guilty and con- confessed and and uh, were sent to prison. Some of them have finished their sentences, and some of them are still in prison. So uh, that's that's. And Nubin after that um, became 
something of an authority on these matters, obviously, and works, uh, talks around the world and, and is studying uh, de-radicalization, countering violent extremism uh, in various ways. So I used him, or used him, as maybe it sounds a little, uh, little <laughs> right. uh, but, but, uh, but I, 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 uh, he, he was a vehicle right. for, uh, he, he was the host, um, to lead us around to different countries to see what they're doing in terms of de-radicalizing right. or countering violent extremism. And I don't mean the security aspect. I don't mean the police aspect. That's been pretty well covered. What I thought was interesting was to see how different countries face up to um, face up to people who are attracted to the ideology. Mm of violent extremism. Now, if they've already committed a crime, well, that's one thing, you know, then they, then it's a, a matter for the police. Although, even after people go to prison, there's a real push to work with people in prison who are violent, who have been violent extremists, or have wanted to be violent extremists and have been convicted of something. But there's also a huge number of people who, who are attracted to ideologies, and what do you do with them? You can't throw everybody in jail. So, and also you can't, you know, you can't sort of put somebody in jail for just thinking something or right. saying or saying something. Right. And, and and I should just point out that 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 we, we're looking at here um, not just uh, uh, Islamic uh, uh, extremists uh, or people who, who espouse a you know ISIS ideology, but also look at uh, neo Nazis and. Uh, and, and discuss violent extremism on the far right. Well, yeah, there's absolutely, I think, your film. By the way, congratulations on a, a fascinating film. And, and, and it raised, I mean, for me, and I think I've said this in the last couple of interviews, uh, for me, the, uh, the sign of a great film is one that raises more questions than it answers. And, mm. and I, think, I think you've done that incredibly well. And, and, Thank you. And, yeah, and given a really uh, a sort of broad stroke about how, how messy and how complicated this this really is and can be, uh, but but with still an edge of hope to it uh, that 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 I think that I really appreciate it. You start your establishing mm -hmm. shot is 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 um, uh, I think kind of a lowdown shot of the street, uh, the New York streets. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. moments. I think I'm, I'm guessing moments after one of the buildings collapsed, nine eleven. Yeah, that's correct. Are we? Great opening shot with a with this 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 narrated line. I think by Mubin, uh, who says the purpose of terrorism is is to make people terrified. It works. I mean, so many of us. I mean, I I know exactly where I was. I, uh, I I was on the phone. I walked into. I saw it on the television screen. I was working in Toronto at the time. It's one of those John F. Kennedy moments, I suppose, for 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 yes. for, for, for many people, right? Or are, for everyone, I think. In, everyone in our in our world Ab sure. ab absolutely do you th do you think after going you know undercover as it were with movie and others and and traveling around and i definitely want to talk about some of the things you learned in germany um are we any farther ahead you know you bring trump up a little bit you drink you know this idea that all muslims are dangerous i mean how you know utterly absurd and and movie and really brings that out beautifully in the film how absurd that really truly is are we farther ahead well, that's a really good question. I, I don't know if we're further ahead. I mean, the purpose of terrorism, as Mubin says, is, is to make us terrified, and it works. Um, and and th that is the purpose of, of terrorists who, who commit acts like this. They are, in as much as they have a strategy and they're thinking at all, and if they're not thinking, the people who are guiding them and inspiring them are certainly thinking. And th their purpose is to create dissension. Their purpose mm. is is not it, 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 it's, it's not they're never going to kill 325 million Americans. You know, on 9/11 they got they got lucky they killed 3,000. That's a lot. But just yes. the other day in New York City, how, how many people did that guy kill? Eight people. Yes. You know, so so it, that's not the goal. The, the goal is the reaction with everybody right. else. So everybody else freaks out. Then they overreact. They create. They come down on the Muslim community, and um, and in fact, unfortunately, in my view, unfortunately, the uh, the reaction to 9/11 was ultimately to invade Iraq, right? Which uh, which caused uh, enormous subsequent problems, uh, which have created you know more terrorist acts. So yeah. so the 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 uh, the reaction is what the terrorists want, 
And I think on the far right, what they want is uh, very often is to, you know, spark a race war or some mm-hmm. nonsense. But what it, uh, but the problem is, is that so many people in powerful positions seem to just do what ISIS wants. Right. They just overreact. It's a circle and, of and it's, it's a circle of madness in a way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and and uh, and and people, of course. You know, people see um, Muslims who commit, or, or people who claim to be Muslims, committing acts like this, and they're very. And then they sort of generalize to all. Muslims. Of course. But then, of course, what happens on the other side is that is that when we, broadly speaking, we um, bomb uh, places of, without going into whether it's a good idea to have engaged militarily with ISIS, without the, the setting that aside. When when a bomb lands on a wedding party in Afghanistan or on on a on a or kills a child in Iraq, people there are angry. Yes, they're upset, and and that and those images are used by uh, Daesh by ISIS to radicalize people all over the world. Tell me, and, and to attack us, Barry. Tell me, they us. I mean, people in the West. Tell, tell, tell me a little bit about, uh, I think, I think I mean, uh, at some point, or it might have been one of the academics that you interview in the film, talk about a grievance narrative that, yes. that, that, that many of these groups, you know, push. And, yes. not, and not just ISIS, but we're, talk, we're talking about other radical kind of right-wing, uh, almost fundamentalistic, I guess, neo-Nazi groups as well. Everybody's, yeah. every, David, everybody's got a grievance. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I have some issues with my parents, you know. I mean, everybody, right. everybody's got, everybody's got, everybody's got. Yeah, but we we don't all drive cars into other people's no. cars. I, I can't believe no. now that we're talking about the ch- the weapon of choice as a vehicle. You know, this. Well, is that that was that uh, was a a. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know why. I, I I always think that a lot of terrorists are, are not really whether far right or religious or whatever, they're not always that bright. I mean, I, I would have thought that's a pretty obvious thing to do years ago, but they kind of hit upon it fairly recently. But it, it is definitely a um, a written tactic. Um, it was printed in an ISIS magazine fairly mm-hmm. recently, like maybe two years ago. I'm not quite sure. Um, and it, uh, it said, it, it laid it out grab a vehicle, you know, because they're very easy to get. You can always attack pedestrians. You can run them over, mm. keep going until the vehicle can't go anymore, and then if you can manage it, get out of the vehicle, take a weapon, you know, with a weapon, a gun or a knife, if you can't get a gun, and kill as many people on foot as you can before, and then you'll get martyrdom when they kill you. And leave a note behind saying you're doing this for the sake of ISIS. And, and this guy in New York did all of that. Right, and it was it was he was following a script which was published by an ISIS magazine. So that's that was the um, that was the goal. But, but when you, just to go back to what you said about grievance narrative, I didn't mean to make light of it. It's 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 it is um, it, the grievances in the Muslim world are uh, are, are are genuine. I mean, right. there are right. there are real grievances. I mean, yeah. they have grievances with their own government. They have grievances with. Uh, uh, poverty. They have grievances with um, the fact that, you know, f- for whatever reason, the United States and its allies, including us and Canada, have made war, have dropped bombs, and had soldiers in the field shooting Muslims. So um, these these uh, can develop into real anger and rage. That that, uh, and I and I would like to. To say, as I think Amarna Thamarasingham, uh, one of the subjects in the film, he's an academic at the University in, in Western Ontario. Mm-hmm. Um, he he points out that that uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to say like if if a, if a Muslim kid in a school in Ontario says, well, you know, what about the what about the West Bank? You know, the 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 occupation of the West Bank. What about Israel and Gaza? That doesn't seem right to me. And and it's you don't want to say, well, what are you, an ISIS recruit, and immediately bust a kid like that? I mean, those, those are legitimate questions. Sure. And, uh, and I think that's worth, worth saying. 
I love. I, it doesn't justify. Right, right. Of course, of course. I, but of course, I, I, must also I do, I do, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't feel like you were trivializing it at all. But you know, everyone does have a grievance. Yes. You know, yes. to some degree, and why is it that some take such a radical approach? When I don't know, I'd like to think there are better ways of you know getting your message out on the street. You know. <laughs> There's right, you know, you can make a film, you can write, you can get to thousands and thousands of people. But I guess this is what radicalization really is all about. It's about getting people's attention uh, through violence, through the demonization of the other, and so on. Yeah, I, I, I don't fully understand the the mindset of somebody who does something like that. Um, but people have studied it. It's very difficult to come up with a. Uh, why somebody takes that step? It's, it's, it, there isn't a completely common uh, path that you mm, can you mm. can you can point to. I mean, the nine eleven um, fanatics were were um, some of them were from middle class families. Right. It isn't just poverty. It isn't right. just deprivation. However, there are some com- some. Some frequent elements. Some of them, as a, as a guy in the film says, Peter Newman, who's an expert on this kind of stuff, says, "Well, a, about half of the ISIS recruits uh, from Europe previously belonged in gangs, right. and I think that they often come from somewhat marginalized communities. Right. Yep. They often come. They sometimes, sometimes, I would say, fairly often, there's a history of family disruption, of family violence. Quite frequently, they've come to." the religion late and mm-hmm. fairly ignorant. They're not really that knowledgeable. But they don't, they're not necessarily very expert in it. Right. They also, there's one idea that rather than, um, rather than this phenomenon being the radicalization of the Islamic faith, this is in se- instead, to some degree, the Islamicization of extremist violence. Mm. It's like if you're, uh, you know, 20 years ago or back in the 70s when, when the FLQ were active and the Red Brigades and the, all these Trotskyist groups were blowing things up around the world, that these young men might have been drawn to, to radical, revolutionary, right. uh, uh, left, left-wing activity and right. violence. But that's not really a thing now, so they, they sort of download this form of violent extremism from the cloud almost. So, so it, it, there's that phenomenon, too. It's but, there is, but there's often a history of criminality and violence. Well, it's interesting you, you, you commented about, you know, coming from marginalized communities. I want to talk about the suburbs a little bit. I, uh, I, I grew up in Rexdale. I grew up in the suburbs oh, yeah. of Toronto, which are now, right. you know, now considered Toronto. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure my wife and kids would say I turned out okay. <laughs> but but um, I think it's really interesting that uh, um, uh, um, um, Mubin says something to the effect of that, you know, I wasn't. I, I felt like I wasn't good enough of a Muslim, and yes. and and his uncle said something to the effect of, you know, you need to get religious, and that yes. that was the beginning of it. So and and so so we've got religion, but I don't. But but hang on a minute here. Before religion came, I'm not good enough. Yeah, right? that's a really I, good point in, I, in Mubin's own story. Yeah, there was a, there was shame involved. There was shame, and there and, was guilt. And, uh, what, you know. Yeah, and and you see people who were torn between different worlds. I mean, there's a there are young men in 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 whether they're in Cairo or in in Paris, and they live in traditional communities, and yet they can turn on their computer and look at porn. They can they can look at all kinds of of, of aspects of modernity but they can be torn between mm-hmm. those worlds and 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 sometimes there's something very perhaps to some people very appealing in a system of thought that tells you what is good and what is bad that tells you uh, you're a good person if you do this it, it's it's much clearer than living in the confusion right. of the modern world and, right. and i think perhaps Many people are drawn, and also to to a larger cause. You know, you're, yes, you're drawn yes, to a larger yes. meaning. You're, it's something outside. We all want that. Of we course, all want to yeah. be part of something larger. That's a very exciting feeling. 
And so sometimes they're drawn to, uh, and, and there's a certain, perhaps a certain kind of personality who's drawn to, this is right and this is wrong. Right. A right. certainty, you know, people yes, see yes. absolute certainty. Like, and, and, the, and, and I think as you saw in the film, that uh, the people in Germany, who, and this goes for both the security services and the people working with radicalized youth, that they're real, they find that there are real similarities between the networks of neo-Nazis and the networks of uh, Muslim supremacists and violent jihadis. Just, just I, and I'm I'm going to take your lead on on the bringing up Germany and the violence prevention network. I want to talk about that in a second. But but Mohammed uh, Mubin's father says, you, yes. know, you, you you young people are gullible." <laughs> just made me laugh out loud. Yeah. You know, and and I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I'd love to hear what you think about that. I'd love to hear what you know. You 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 unpack it a little bit in the film, but. I'm not sure gullibility is the issue as much as well. I don't know what the issue is really in truth. But what 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 can you tell me uh, uh, about that conversation? It seemed like there was a little bit of tension there. Yeah, and later in the film, of course, there's another scene <laughs> of with Nubian yeah. and his father, where yeah. his father is very angry at him. Yes, or or, or for or, coming out basically on on on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah for, for he should have taken witness protection, and yes. he's not against him busting the Toronto 18. He's He's against the fact that he's being public about it and uh, sort of resents it um, because it brings shame upon the community. But, um, yeah, I I, I think that that that, that dynamic between him and his father is actually really... I wish I had time in the film to have explored it more. I really like his father, and uh, I really like Mubin, but the conflict they have, which is a loving conflict, but Mm -hmm. nevertheless is is a real one, I guess a between two generations in the Muslim community. Well, it kind of contradicts my thinking that that radicalization, this kind of thinking, this kind of understanding of the world comes out of an environment where, you know, you aren't affirmed, you aren't loved, you aren't acknowledged. And so uncle says, yeah. you need, you know, you need, you're not good enough, you need to get religion, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, I mean, obviously, I don't think, and I think this is where, where, where um, is it Cornelia, the woman from from yes. Germany who says you know there's no there's no gray areas here this is just this yes. is, right this for, is for them for, yeah. for, for in their mind correct yeah and, this and, is... and it, it yeah it, it resolves the conflict within them right between you know it, it we'll tell you what to think and i think it's true that probably younger people are are more gullible in the sense that you, your your ego yourself isn't really fully formed you don't know quite who you are what to think and 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 if somebody comes along who's a charismatic leader, mm. you know, we might spot this guy, you know, in adulthood as, you know, God, this guy's an egomaniac idiot. I'm not going to go follow him. But for a young person, I know this is true in my own life. I think I was drawn to sort of charismatic uh, professors and leaders in a way that I probably wouldn't be now. I mean, you imagine... Imagine you or I were exposed to Charlie Manson. Mm. You know, you sort of back slowly towards the door, but <laughs> right. but but uh, but a lot of people could be drawn in by a by a leader like that, and that I think does happen with uh, with with young people, both far right extremists and and Islamist extremists. I think it's really it's fascinating to me the the whole notion of de-radicalization there's no real program in the US for it as you you show and That's in, not entirely true. Oh okay. No, there's right, re- no real program in prison. Oh in I prison. Think there right, are some thank you. popping up and and I think uh, there's been in fact actually I believe the uh, Anyway, in Minnesota there's some stuff there's some stuff going on in Maryland. There are some little seeds there but Generally, the feeling in the United States is tends to be more um, police and security oriented. Well, there was, there, was it, I, I don't know who it was, but I think it was later on in the film, somebody said politicians use a, a discourse that divides. And, and yeah. I just thought that was really interesting. I mean, that's that was Fouad in the uh, in the French uh, banlieue, the suburb in uh, and that, Paris. And and isn't that what we're seeing? I mean, it's happening in Canada oh, without a doubt. And but boy, is it happening in the U.S. right now? I mean, we could you get more metaphorical than than let's build a wall? Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, you know now they're 
canceling the diversity visa program um, in the states, the and putting a they've trying to enforce a ban on various Muslim countries. <laughs> you notice that they don't put. Saudi Arabia on the list, right, even right. though 15 of the 19 I'm terrorists fine. on 9-11 were from, we're, we're from were Saudi. Saudis. Right, yeah. right. So it's kind of a, yeah, I wonder why. I want I, I mean, it seems to me like, you know, uh, you, you almost need to go back and do a part two, a follow up on and go deeper in what's going on in Germany. You, you know, I really agree. I, I, I mean, it, it, the, the problem, the difficulty with the film for me is that I, I would have loved to have had more time sure. to to explore in, in further depth uh, Germany in particular, um, also some of the conflicts in in the UK mm. around uh, because there's a government directed uh, the program in the UK that puts a duty uh, a legal duty upon school teachers anybody who they have if they've witnessed extremist thinking to, to report right, it. So right, so that right. that become, that's that violate it's in the United States and in Canada sort of somewhere in between, we we would regard that as being intrusive and, and indeed it's had this huge pushback from the Muslim from some in the Muslim right, community right. there. It's fascinating to me that in in the violence prevention network in Germany that 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 she talk, talks a great deal about how I help me out here, but I think something about it, you know we're we're kind of our their first point of contact, um, almost I, I, almost I, I want to say their first human point of contact with some of these these extreme you know these radicalized youth where she says yeah. well, we actually listen to their story yeah I yeah just, I thought that was brilliant yeah I'm, no, I'm I, so I, glad I, you put that into the film I agree yeah that was uh, that's good most uh, most of their experience with the VPN has been with neo Nazis mm. and and they and they I guess in the last couple of years I'm not sure how long they've been doing with uh, Muslim youth. But there are a number of groups, a number of organizations and, and programs in Europe, not just VPN, there's one called Hayat, uh, which means freedom, I think, in Arabic. And, and uh, there, there are a number of them. And there are some in, in Denmark. There's a, a remarkable program in their second largest city where they work with youth who are, who are uh, drawn to extremism, um, getting them reconnected to the community for jobs and education. And, of course, the criticism is, oh, my God, this is all just hugging a thug. Right. But, uh, and, 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 and it's difficult for them because it's very hard to prove. You cannot prove that a person didn't become a terrorist as a result of your work. Right, right. <laughs> because you can't prove that negative. But, of course, if there's one person who is connected to a program that who did does commit some offense, and you know everyone comes down on them. So it's a, they 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 have it tough in Europe. That America's not the only place where there's divisive politics. So right, right. Certainly, obviously in France. Well, but, it was but, fat. but also in in uh, you know in places like Sweden too. Well, fascinating how you bring out in the film the the story of um, um, the the I forget who it was that was being interviewed, but talked about using Muhammad on a, a job application. Yeah, and that was then, again. That was Fuad. Yeah, and then and changing. He's it, a remarkable guy. He changing it to Fa- was it changing his name to Fabian? Fabian, then, yeah. Yeah, and then was able to get to Fabian was able to get the interviews and, and absolutely, was, yeah. absolutely. There is uh, you know systemic bias in 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 Paris, and of course the awful thing is is that ISIS, the ISIS attack on the Bataclan and the yes, and and, and elsewhere, and other attacks, the Nice attack, have just of course, make it much, 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 much harder, and and those people, the people who are of Muslim youth or Afri- African French youth, ha- have a, a an even harder time. And 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 of course, that is yes. To to repeat, that's what ISIS wants. I, it, it's it's what ISIS wants exactly. This is this is kind of the definition of terrorism, really, isn't it? I, yes. I, I I so love the 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 way for me anyway. One of the I mean, there's so many takeaways. As I said earlier on, there's so many sort of unanswered questions, which I think lead us, I hope, closer to some kind of a solution, whatever whatever that means. But this this idea of listening, this idea of validation. I mean, we get back to that shame and that guilt 
too, it seems to me. Because, yeah. Because when you listen to somebody's story, you validate, you affirm the other. I think you, you're starting to attend to that that yeah. that, that shame, that guilt, that anger, if that, if that makes any yeah. sense. I, it absolutely makes sense. That's, and I think in the film, we there is a, a, an ISIS... A, a, an ISIS volunteer who fought or at least worked with the security services of ISIS, witnessed people being beheaded. Uh, right. For, 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 and, and came back, has come back to Greater Toronto area and is living here. And we, he's, he's anonymous, but we interview him. And uh, I think you see it in his, um, in his story that this sense of, that he was a, 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 a young person who, who, who believed in an ideology, wanted to fight President Assad of Syria, was appalled by the brutality of that Syrian regime, and wanted to fight it, and then joined a group that he saw was doing the fighting and found itself in the situation. But um, I don't think that really goes to your point about shame, but he certainly feels ashamed sure. and appalled at right. what he witnessed right. and what he may have participated in. So... Um, I don't know that he participates I, in it, but, there's, there's, but, but there's, that, that, that presents a problem, of course, for, sure. for us. Because sure. how, do you, how do you deal with somebody like that? He's joined right. a criminal organization. He's come back. What do you do? Well, you know, can, and, and, and can, have, can you really de-radicalize? Can you ever really de-radicalize? And yet move, move. I think in his case, yes. Right, um, right. But then there may be cases where no. And, and of course, the police and security mm-hmm. services have a really difficult job because, mm. you know, the uh, people will come down on them if they arrest people who haven't done anything and, like the Toronto 18, haven't actually committed a violent act. They just planned it. Right. And they'll get accused of, of entrapment. <laughs> right. As Mubin gets accused of entrapment. Um, and he's very angry about that, as you see in the film. But, uh, if of course... The police, when they when they have been watching somebody, and then that somebody does something violent, then of course they get blamed for that. You know, I I love the way you 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 end the film with this uh, this idea that deradicalization is an art, right? That that you know, I mean, it's it it it, it ha- I mean, it seems like it has to. I mean, there's no real cut and dried answer here. There, this is this is only gray area. Right. This yeah. Is, this is not black or white. It's going to I, be different in I, every I, case. Yeah, I, I think there are. I think that some kids saying, "Well, I'm really angry at America for bombing right. the land." You know, or or or, or somebody says, "I'm going to go out and kill as many kuffar as I can find." Then, then th- th- those are not black and white. But right. I think, in, in the one case, you have freedom of speech. In the other case, you're planning and you're you're saying you're going to commit a crime. So, so. So, but, 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 um, but in between, yeah, there is a tremendous amount of, 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 of gray and, and it's, so, it's important. It's, a, it's as Mupin says at the end of the film, you know, whether they're like, and he includes like far right extremists. These people are, are, are Islamists. I mean, those people are your neighbors. You know, right. They're, they're, they're people, you know, and, and that's not to say, oh, you got to report them or you got to, you got to watch out and be suspicious of everybody. But, it's good to remember that we are all part of one community. So you, Barry, I can, I'm going to, I'm going to make a little bit of a leap here. Are you hopeful? I mean, what about, what, what about, you know, hatred, anger, violence, re- revenge, the demonization of the other. I mean, these, the divisive politics, you know, politicians who use a discourse that divides, I mean, you know, coming out of this, spending so much time in, in so many different countries and with so many different people who have been radicalized, who some have changed, some maybe not as hopeful. Where where do you stand uh, on some of this? On, on, on whether it's ho- whether there's hope. Yeah, are we going to get to a place where we actually believe in similarity through difference instead of the other way around? Yes, and I think we are. I think we are. Mm. I mean, that we is a very small word for a very big concept because there's a lot of different people in the world and a lot of different groups. There will continue to be violence. There will continue Mm. to be terrorism. I remember the President of the United States after the uh, Las Vegas horror uh, last month. 
he uh, he said we something like we've got to we've got to eradicate evil from the world. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, good luck with yeah, that. Yeah. Good luck with Trump. that. Yeah, good luck. With I want to see the I want to see the budget for that, Barry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's a big budget, and so yeah, there will always be violent acts, and in fact, um, th- there will be. I think ever since two thousand and three and the invasion of of Iraq, it's gotten a lot worse. Um, the destabilization of that region and the, just the perception of the West sure. as ham- anyway. I think that that gets worse. I think the refugee matters in Europe uh, have been pretty difficult. There have been lots of attacks on refugees. and um, So all of those things probably will continue. But, I mean, overall, the world is, people never believe this, but it's just really true. You just have to look at the stats. The world is a lot less violent. Mm. Even terrorism is, is actually um, not, is, is, is actually, I think, worse in the 70s and 80s. What we do have now is instant media. Right. So any right. little story becomes a huge emotional right. story right. because we see images and we hear about it in real time on Twitter and so forth. But, but in fact, the world is less violent overall. And if we can you know, avoid a nuclear war, <laughs> it'll probably continue to be less violent. <laughs> right. I'm not sure if that's hopeful or, or, or not, <laughs> but but I do love I do love how you 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 end the film and 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 it's kind of almost a bookend because I think it comes up in in in, in probably deeply intentional, but a conversation with Mubin and his family about you know you quote he, one of his sons quotes Edmund Burke I think, but but you, this notion of doing nothing is not an option says Mubin and I I I just I I don't is see that it. I, is that Edmund Burke that that uh, yeah the, the yeah the triumph of good. I didn't know that was yeah that if the, the the is that good men do nothing yeah that's oh yeah yeah that's Edmund the, the evil yeah. will only triumph that's good right do nothing yeah yeah, yeah. okay I didn't that's know so that great I, it's so just wonderful to know that families around you know that there are families around the world having these conversations at dinner it's it's yeah <laughs> well it, I should I should just say for people listening that the film sounds confusing because we're visiting all these countries but there's also a thread in it yes absolutely. and his family and, absolutely. and his wife and kids and you and his dad and their discussions and their conflict yeah barry thank you for your time today i what a what a remarkable uh, film uh, fascinating and and insightful and and as i said so many questions and and things that we we've, we've barely scratched the surface sadly yeah but Th- thank you dave i really enjoyed yeah, it Appreciate really enjoyed it, it. Uh, talking with barry stevens today about his new film Undercover Jihadi, you can find it on TVO's uh, website, hopefully to exist there in perpetuity. Thank, thanks a lot again for your, for your time. Appreciate it.